how the NAACP is defining their direction for its second century, and guess who distributed 3,300 bags of groceries last month? Up next on the Giblin Report. Welcome to the Giblin Report. I'm Assemblyman Tom Giblin, representing the 34th District, which includes Clifton, Woodland Park, Glen Ridge, Montclair, and East Orange. On today's show, I am pleased to have Thomas L. Reynolds, president of the Montclair NAACP, who will be discussing their initiatives. But first, I'm happy to welcome Thomas Conk, a member of the board of directors of the Human Needs Pantry of Montclair. Welcome, Tom. Good morning, and thank you for having me. It's a joy to be here to talk about the food pantry. Well, first of all, tell us the proper name of the food pantry. The Human Needs Food Pantry Incorporated, INC. And, and where is that located at? It is located at 9 Label Street in Montclair. And how long has the, the food pantry been in existence? Food pantry, as, it, as the organization it is today, has been in existence for about 25 years. And, of course, your involvement goes back how many years? About 20 years. And as a member of the board of directors, you, you kind of set the policy as far as the food uh, pantry is concerned? Yes, we sent the overall direction. The day in and day out management of the food pantry is uh, the executive director, Deanna London. I, I noticed on uh, some of the notes I got for today's show, 3,300 bags of groceries this month? Is in that month, possible? In the month of August, yes, sir. That's about, that's what we di distributed, 3,300, 3,400 bags of groceries. You know, if you talk to people about Montclair that say, Montclair is middle income, in some cases right. parts of town is affluent. How, what, why 3,300? We have roughly 500 registered family units that are allowed to come to the food pantry to collect food. Those 500 family units can consist of a single person, and the largest I've seen as a family unit is eight people, with a mom and six or seven children and a grandmother or a grandfather. And they're allowed, once they register, they're allowed to come to the food pantry every week and pick up some food. There are, in the 500 family units, there are roughly 1,000 people who represent those units, those families. And What's the criteria to qualify the, to get a the, bag of groceries? Because we receive uh, U.S. Department of the Agriculture surplus commodity food, we follow the federal government guidelines for poverty in order to qualify people for the food pantry. When a person walks into the food pantry and says, I need, really need some food, we will give them groceries based upon the number of people in their family. We tell them at the time that we give them the groceries that in order to come back, they must come back and prove their income, prove their residency, prove their, uh, their utility bills. So this is just restricted to residents of Montclair? No. It is anyone who walks into the food pantry who has no food pantry in their town in Essex County. So right now, our predominant base is the people in Bloomfield and the people in Montclair. Predominantly Montclair, but a good number from Bloomfield. And what about financial support? Do you get donations from individuals or organizations? How much does that account as far as the, the budget for the uh, human needs food pantry? The budget is completely funded by donations. There is no other income that comes to the food pantry other than donations. So you take monetary donations and would, I guess, a lot of issues coming up with Thanksgiving approaching or Christmas? I mean, do you take actual food, turkeys, uh, other types of... Uh... We, we take everything. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, um, we basically rely upon food drives, people who will do food drives for us. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the majority of the food drives happen uh, during the months of November and December. So, for example, in the month of August, we had, I don't believe we had any people doing food drives for us in August. So the majority of the food that we get comes from the community food bank in Harrison, New Jersey. That food that we get from them is if the U.S. Department of Agriculture has surplus food that they are giving out at the time, we will get that from the community food bank. They, should I continue? No, no. Well, I'm, oh, okay. trying, I'm trying <laughs> to get like as much as I can. The, okay. the hours of, of, of oh, the food okay. bank are, are what? The food pantry is open for donations by ind from individuals from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
Will you pick up uh, from organizations if they have a food drive? It's easier to arrange, depending upon the number quantity of food that they're getting, it's easier to arrange for them to pick it, deliver it to us. But yes, we will pick up in those cases where they do not have the ability to deliver it. You have a whole cadre of volunteers that help with the human needs food pantry. What, what are some of the duties they, they perform? The duties that they, the volunteers perform are, number one, they will deliver food to shut-ins, mostly senior citizens who are unable to get out. They will take the donated food that we get every week. Every week we go to the, um, Panera Bread in Montclair, we go to King's, we go to uh, Pathmark and some other local bakeries and they give us baked goods that is surplus baked goods from the prior days, day or two. So they, they will repackage those into bags of um, smaller bags that they can distribute then to the people who are coming. We also uh, purchase grow, uh, fresh fruit and vegetables every week. So they will package the fresh fruit and vegetables into smaller packages. They, those come in cases, so they'll package them into smaller packages so that they can be distributed uh, to, based upon the family size. Do you have to worry about any issues, for example, like with people's culture, about different types of food that you can provide for them? We ask them before we put the food in the bag. Well, we put the food in the bag based upon what the menu is for the week. But we, when we give them the food, we offer them meat every week also. And that is where the predominant culture thing comes in. And so we will ask before we will put any meat into a bag, how much would they, would they like this beef? Would they like chicken? Would they like fish? Whatever our meat is for that week. You mentioned uh, before about 3,300 bags you know, during the month of August. How does that compare to, say, a year ago? I mean, is this on the rise? It, the number of people that are coming to the food pantry for food is on the rise. About a year and a half ago, we had roughly 400 family units, and we now have 500 family units. We, had, we now have a little over 1,000 people in those family units, and we, last year, a year and a half ago, we had about 800 people. So, yes, it's definitely on the rise. Well, you have the families uh, and the individuals increasing. Are you getting the uh, appropriate donations uh, in terms of support or we have been financial support? Is it keeping up the pace? Because I, I read, I think it was some of the community food banks uh, are having problems. Their, their cupboard uh, was, was kind of bare and uh, they, were, they were having challenges. We are very blessed to be able to say no. The people in Montclair and the people in the surrounding communities who we send requests for donations to have been very generous to us. And we are not suffering at this time. We always need the money because there is an increasing need, but we are able to keep the food pantry stocked. Yes. So uh, if some of our viewers wanted to make a financial donation, how would they do that? And what's the address of the food pantry? The address is 9 Label Street in Montclair. And how do they make the checkout? The Human Needs Food Pantry. And then the issue of dropping off food, uh, how do they, that's certain days of the week? Yes, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, the easiest place, the way to arrange that is that they would go to the website and they can get the contact information for the executive director and contact the executive director about their need, their wish to hold a food drive for us and then delivery options and when it can happen. So organizations, for example, or church groups want to set up a, say, a drive for the uh, human needs food pantry. Would you kind of help them, so to speak, uh, about your wish list uh, and, you know, uh, they, what, what's your, what's your uh, the, be the most helpful? You, ha you have such a list? Yes, Deanna would be able to handle that. Deanna would be able to tell you what we need at the present time, what, the, what really goes into the bags, what the type of food they're asking to go into the bags and, and such. Yes, so that is definitely something that uh, Deanna could handle. Do you come in contact, uh, or I assume Deanna does to a certain degree, uh, the recipients? I mean, what kind of profile do you have? Are these people... Uh, they, they, they run the spectrum as far as yes, education and, and, and previous background and employment. Yes. They, they're all out of work, I assume, most of them, right? Uh, no, sir. Um, we, with the Welfare to Work program that came through in the 1990s, we found that even though people were going back to work as a result of that... These are kind of the working poor, I guess? Yes, that they were unable to attend uh, the food pantry and pick up groceries when we're open for pickups on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 12.30 and 2.30. So as a result, we open the food pantry on Thursday evenings for those people who are working but still qualify based upon the federal guidelines. And so volunteers like myself go in on Thursdays and I deal with the clients on Thursday evenings. And so I'm mostly dealing with the working poor 
who need the assistance. What's the mindset of, you know, the, of, of some of your um, recipients? I mean, uh, you know, they, 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 are they discouraged or are you, you trying to motivate them about, you know, getting employment or, or, or staying strong? I mean, you know, what, what kind of? No, I, I'm, I'm just focused upon being able to provide them the food that we're able to give them. I'm not, I don't get involved in the, as a volunteer, I, I'm not qualified to get involved in their personal so you, situations. So I don't encourage them to get a job, to go to get a different job or anything. I just am very happy to be able, and they're very grateful, very grateful for any assistance that we can give them. Yeah. Uh, you get a certain kind of satisfaction of, of, do, of doing oh, this work? Sure. Wouldn't be doing it for 20 years if huh? I didn't get a lot of satisfaction from it. Yes, I, my parents uh, instilled that in me that we are here to give back to people, and I've done that all my life. Well, if you were going to say anything to our viewers about, you know, supporting the human needs uh, pantry, you know, could you kind of come up with some uh, valid the, reasons? With some valid reasons? Because of the need of people. I mean, these are our brothers and our sisters. And to have somebody really just come in and say, I have nothing in my refrigerator to eat for the next week, and to be able to give them something, uh, the satisfaction that I get from that is just overwhelming just to be blessed as I am to have the ability, number one, to do it, and number one, to be able to support it financially at the same time. What do you see over the next year? I mean, you're going to see uh, probably an increased need for... Yes, I don't... I, unfortunately, given the economic environment that we're in, I can see the need continuing to increase, yes. Yeah. Well, maybe tell us once again about how they go out, support uh, the Human Needs Pantry, where it's located, and the hours of operation. Okay. Can I just tell you one other thing that we do? Yes. The one other thing that we do is we have a clothing store, and we accept clothing donations and household good donations. Is that at the same location? Same location. And once a month, we have a tremendous number of volunteers that are assisting that, take the clothing, sort it, and put it out for the people to take. We take household goods, uh, small household goods, sheets, towels, pillowcases, that type of thing, dishes, to be able to give to these people so that they don't have to buy it. And that is a very, very big um, benefit to the clients that we have. They come in and they're very excited about it. They always are asking me on Thursday night, when is the next night that we can go upstairs and get clothing and whatever. So that's one thing that people could donate. People, we're always willing to take donations and we're always love to have food drives. Well, the address is 9 Label Street in Montclair. And the telephone number and the contact information is all on our website, www.humanneedsfoodpantry.org. Well, Tom, uh, Tom Conk, I want to thank you for appearing on the Giblin Report. Uh, I'm very familiar with the work of the uh, Human Needs Food Pantry on Label Street uh, in Montclair. As you said, bags of groceries, uh, in some cases uh, clothing, then also some household goods are there for people who meet the uh, criteria and uh, the hours of operation to drop off are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 to 12? Correct. Well, thank you once again, and I want to, uh, we're going to be taking a break uh, at this time. We'll be right back uh, in a few minutes, and we'll have uh, Tom Reynolds, the president of the Montclair chapter of the NWCP uh, after this break. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. Keep up the good work. Enjoy okay? to be here. Thank okay. you. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, this is Tom Giblin. Uh, I represent the 34th Legislative District, which includes Clifton, Woodland Park, Glen Ridge, Montclair, and East Orange. Join me on this segment of today's program is Thomas Reynolds, President of the Montclair Chapter of the NAACP. Uh, welcome, Tom, uh, to the Giblin Report. Thanks for having me. Uh, the NAACP is one of our nation's uh, oldest civil rights groups, 
just give us a, like a brief overview of what the NWC has maybe done in the past and perhaps some of your goals as far as the future is concerned. Okay, I guess to jump into that, um, when I came president of the NACP, we had about a 200 person membership. We've managed to grow that to 300 members in the last year. Um, and some of the things that we're really trying to do is take that civil rights, that social justice and the need for education and economic equality and bring that to a local scale. So we've been trying to do programs in Montclair that really help out the community that way. You're the youngest president in the state, is that right? Yes, it is. And it's actually been a great honor and very humbling to be president. Some of the stories, the people I've met, the things I've heard, and the things that people are going through. It's just, it's really been a great honor to be president so far. Is the NAACP still relevant now as it was years ago? I mean, a lot of people have felt, well, the African-American community has kind of made such tremendous strides in all levels of society. Is the urgency still there? There is definitely an urgency and need for the NAACP. The sort of things that we're dealing with a lot more now aren't the same sort of blatantly racist issues that you had 50 years ago, 60 years ago, you weren't still dealing with lynching, but we are dealing with educational inequalities. We're dealing with issues that, from the school voucher bills uh, that disproportionately take ed money from school public schools and put them into a semi-public situation. We are dealing with environmental justice issues, and we're really dealing with a situation where I feel that a lot of our youth haven't been given the opportunity to step up as leaders. You mentioned that you went from 200 members to 300 members in just one year. Uh, are you getting younger members to be uh, involved, or, or is this kind of a, you know, crosses all age spans? We've been really getting a lot of younger members involved. We have uh, a huge initiative with our young adult uh, committee. They are doing a lot to bring the under 40 crowd out. Um, making it both fun and informational, educational, and informing people on how to get involved in the social justice fight, and especially in this new era. If somebody wanted to join the Montclair chapter of the NWCP, how would they go about doing that? I mean, do you have a website? Do you have a phone number? We definitely, we have a website set up, um, www.montclairnacp.org. Um, you could also call, we have a phone number, 973-746-9315. But all that information can be found on the website. What's some of the challenges that you see as president of the Montclair chapter? Are you looking to kind of move up the ladder in terms of leadership at the, you know, the state or even the federal level? Um, I really think, for me, I'd like to stay in the Montclair area. That's where I believe a lot of the work can, needs to be done, where a lot of the victories can actually happen at that local level where we can talk with the Board of Education, where we can meet with the town council, the, uh, the police chief and the fire chief, and really start having those conversations on why don't we have more African Americans in certain areas, how can we help out, where, how can we get forward, how can we involve other ethnic and uh, other groups altogether in the, in the function of the community. This issue uh, in Montclair, I guess, probably impacts the African community quite a bit is the issue of affordable housing. Uh, yeah. And it just seems that because values, I guess, over the last 10 years have increased considerably in Montclair with homes and, and, and coupled with that goes the whole issue of, uh, of, of rents. Uh, how, how are you trying to uh, cope with that issue or, or, or some of the challenges that presents? Well, that actually has affected my own family. My grandmother and my mom, uh, they've all left Montclair because of the rising cost of living here. Did they own homes? Uh, they did own homes. My grandmother was here for th almost 35 years. Well, before. she probably got more value than she ever dreamt, right? Isn't she definitely that? got more value. And when she moved to Delaware, she was able to make that work for her. But there's a rising cost in the cost of living in Montclair. I have to give Montclair credit for having a large, going above and beyond the um, necessity for affordable housing, but there still is a need for it. And some of the arguments we're hearing against it are some of the same arguments you heard in the 60s about not in my neighborhood. And I really feel that that's something that people need to understand, that it's expensive to live in Montclair, and any sort of help that people who want to be here, who can be here, who are value to the community, should be allowed to live in Montclair. So Tom, you have roots uh, all in Montclair? When my family moved here from Jamaica, Montclair was where we came. I was born and raised here. And I went to the Montclair Public Schools. Um, I, didn't, I went to college at NJIT, so I wasn't even too far from Montclair, and I came right back after. And what kind of work do you do professionally? I work as an architect in a, a small firm in Paramus. Um, I also do a lot of volunteer work with uh, the Boy Scouts, Troop 12 Montclair, a national organization of minority architects, and Architecture for Humanity. Just to touch on your work as an architect, 
things quiet with the economy? Things are slowing, but luckily there's, we've reached a point where there's like a steady pace. Um, I do a lot of commercial work, so there are people, every time somebody moves out of a larger office to a smaller, that's something that we can do. Um, but there's definitely, you can see a slowing trend in architecture. You know, one of the uh, notes I, I read about uh, the Montclair chapter that you recently received a literacy grant. Yeah. And, and, and what's the, the amount or, or even what's the implications of that grant in terms of trying to, is it geared towards high school students or? It's a financial literacy grant and what it oh, is. Oh, financial literacy. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's quite fine. Yeah. And it's. Uh, Showing people how to make the best with their exactly. money. Exactly. When What we're going to be doing is a lot of small workshops and these workshops are going to key on very specific issues from uh, foreclosure assistance, understanding how to navigate that arena, understanding how to avoid loan, loan scams uh, and wealth asset building, and I mean down to events that are going to be held for younger kids about how to open a bank account to how to start saving for college and saving for uh, retirement. How are you going to publicize that? How are people going to know about the dates and locations? Well, one of the first things you can do is definitely check out our website again, MontclairNAACP.org. Or we'll also make sure that it's going to be on the, in the newspapers. We're going to try to hit every medium we have. We have a Twitter account, a uh, Facebook page set up, Tumblr. They're all Montclair and ACP. And um, we'll be using all those avenues to make sure that we get the message out to people as well as direct mailing to our membership and hopefully word of mouth. What's your pitch when you go out for new members? I mean, what do you say to people? Like, first of all, what's the dues? Like, if somebody wants to join the NAACP. Well, first, the dues are $30 a year. Um, there's also a life membership, which can, is $750, or you can take, break that down to 10 payments of 75 Some of the things that I really like to stress about the Montclair and ACP is that we are moving forward. We have a young board. We have a group of people who are on our board, executive board who are respected leaders in the community. We've got Lois Whipple from the Montclair Fund for Educational Excellence. We've got Al Pelham from the Montclair Neighborhood Development Corporation. And we're really out to try to help as many people that need the help. Um, we've done a backpack drive recently where we gave school supplies to kids who need them. Uh, they, and we also had a barbecue at the same time. So we had a fun that, day. That out. was the one that was down in the American Legion, I believe, yes. Yes, Kit Turner, the uh, commander of the post, has been You seem to have a pretty good relationship with the American Legion. That's the Crawford Cruise post, right? Yes, yeah, so the Crawford for Cruise Post is one of the older black, uh, majority black posts in the area, and they've been very helpful for us and letting us use their space whenever we need it, as well as doing joint events with them. Um, we'll also be having an upcoming bus trip for veterans down to the Black Veterans Museum in Philadelphia, the ACES Museum. You mentioned about your involvement with the uh, Boy Scouts, but many issues that uh, not only impact you know the African American community, but other communities as well as this whole issue of having role models or father images and you know in some cases you're dealing with single parents uh, is this something you're going to look at in terms of trying to help uh, younger people who are in grammar school or high school about trying to keep them on the right road? Absolutely. Actually, what we're looking to create is called what we're calling a pipeline of leadership. Um, this goes back to the earlier where I was saying that we want to start with younger kids and get them involved, it's kind of give them a place where they can have their own voice, where they can be able to talk with mentors and volunteers about what they see as issues, what they just what they want to talk about, and be able to get that sort of got those sort of um, relationships built where they can go on to be leaders in the community. So we've got the Junior Youth Council for the elementary and high, middle school students, the Youth Council for the high school students, College Division at Montclair State for the college students, and during each step we kind of show them more about how to get involved in the community, how to be in leaders in their own community, how to just be better people in their own lives. You mentioned about Boy Scouts. Were you a Boy Scout yourself? I was a Boy Scout. I uh, went on through Troop 12 in Montclair to become an Eagle Scout. I've gone back and now I'm an Assistant Scout Master at the Troop. It's quite an achievement being an Eagle Scout. Uh, the issue of employment, uh, it impacts everybody today in today's society, but I, I think in some ways it's probably uh, impacting the minority community that much greater. Uh, what steps are you taking in that area in terms of trying to help people? Do you, or do you have any maybe network with another organization? You, you're thinking about that? Absolutely. And when you talk about unemployment, especially in the black community, it's not the 9, 10% you're hearing nationally. We are reaching numbers of almost 30% unemployment for black males. That's more than the Great Depression. Do you find that the case in Montclair? In Montclair, you're... It's not the same numbers, but we are still seeing high numbers of unemployment and just people who are scared to lose their jobs. So what we're doing 
is trying to teach people their sort of resume building skills, interview skills, help them along the lines. We've teamed up with the uh, Urban League. We've teamed up with the New Jersey Young Professionals. And we're trying to get all these organizations to kind of give people the services they need so that they're fully prepared to enter the workforce, be, uh, handle interviews, handle uh, getting a new job that will help them along the way. Well, Tom, I want to thank you for coming on the uh, Giblin Report. Uh, youngest president of an NAACP chapter uh, in the uh, state. You know, if people want to uh, reach you, uh, once again, I think it's very important. I know you're trying to recruit uh, new members and, of course, you know, trying to network about solving some of the, the problems we have in Montclair or Essex County. How do they go about doing that? Again, you can reach us at our website, www.montclairnaacp.org. On there, you'll find phone numbers, you'll find contact information. Um, I answer the phone, it'll go directly to me, so I, I will take sure, make sure that I take the steps to help you as best I can. And where are the uh, monthly meetings? Do people have an opportunity to kind of go to a meeting just if, without necessarily joining just to see how the organization works? Absolutely. Uh, every third Thursday at the Crawford Cruise American Legion Post, that's 210 Bloomfield Avenue, you can come down at 7.30 p.m. on the third Thursday, and that's when we have our general membership meeting. So this job taking up a lot of time as the president of the NAACP? It's definitely taking a lot of my time. There's a level of stress, but I have to say that every victory that we've had has made every stress worthwhile. You just had a recent convention. You also had a national convention, too, right? Yes, we did. And uh, we're gearing up now for the holidays, actually. Um, so we're going to be having our holiday meet and greet on December 10th. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, I want to thank Tom Reynolds, uh, president of the Montclair chapter of the NAACP. If you have any pressing issues that require my attention uh, or any issues regarding uh, current legislation, you can reach me at 973 779-3125. Of course, you can email me at asmgiblin at njleg.org for more information. You can also go to my website, assemblymangiblin.com. I want to thank... Uh